Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mandy and if you are new here then I am a mom to a two and a half year old little boy. I am also currently 34 weeks pregnant with baby number two who is a little girl and she will be here about mid-June. On this channel I make Montessori videos as well as positive discipline videos, pretty much anything about motherhood and now pregnancy and I'll have a new baby so that is what we do over here on this channel in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you our Montessori inspired playroom slash homeschool room now that Luca's two and a half I want to start introducing him to little concepts nothing crazy keeping it really light and fun for him mostly learning through play I'm going to be sharing with you all the little zones of our playroom from his toy rotation our wall art, his gross motor movement play, his craft cart, um, and all of his open-ended play and things like that. I will make sure to leave timestamps down below just in case you want to see something particular, but that is all going to be in this video. So if you are interested in seeing that, let's just jump right in. So here is an overview. We use a corner of the basement as the playroom and I used to be obsessed with keeping everything super aesthetic now I want to bring more color in and just have it be a little bit more playful and to me the most important thing is that it is functional we do have a television and a couch but we do not watch tv down here I like to keep the spaces very separate this is just something that was already in the basement so we are just working with it I really like to keep the playroom separated as far as his shelf work and his open-ended play. So over here, I just have an empty sensory bin. He got these silly bendy straw things for Easter and he kind of just like enjoys playing with them. So I just include that as his open-ended play. I have his play scarves in here, which is a fabulous open-ended material. And he does dig in here sometimes now that he's getting more into like creative and imaginative play. And then on this shelf here, I'm going to put our little essentials basket once baby girl comes so I could have like her diapers and just like extra changes of things down here for her just in case we're down here playing. I want to have everything really accessible and functional and then over here one of his gross motor movement activities is this tunnel and he will ask for it sometimes he knows how to unzip it now and open it up for himself but I do keep it tucked away for the most part because it does take up a lot of space over on the other side we have his Duplo blocks he has been so into building lately so these have been getting tons of use he'll bring it down he'll ask me to sit with him and we will just go building for a while so this has been a hit in the playroom as of recently and then these are just some of his animal figurines so this just has some realistic animal figurines as well as his dinosaurs and then in this cabinet also still going with open-ended play we have a train set for him this train set doesn't get used that often he enjoys playing with the trains themselves and how they magnetize together but he doesn't exactly like building this yet um, he will use just like the little ramp and play with the trains that way but um, I'm hoping this gets more use soon this set is from Ikea and then in this last bottom shelf I just have some of his trays so that I could display some of his shelf work they're just extra trays honestly if you purchase Melissa and Doug toys you will end up with a ton of these. You can also get them at the Dollar Tree. I get mine at Goodwill. Actually, every single one of these is either from Goodwill, Dollar Tree, or from a toy that we had already previously bought from Melissa and Doug. I also want to mention that this little fireplace right here is non-functioning. Just in case it is not a hazard, we do not leave this plugged in at all for him to access. So that is just one thing I wanted to note. And then I figure from here, we'll just kind of pan around the room. So this is a bathroom that has his potty and obviously bathroom things in it. This right here, he has been loving. They are just three primary colored rings with the matching bean bags. This is from his latest Love Every box. And his favorite thing to do is lay out what he calls the hula hoops and he will jump in them. He also loves tossing the bean bags, but jumping from one hoop to the next is one of his favorite gross motor activities right now. So I have just been leaving this out. And then this wall right here has his shelf work. So starting at the top, I have this wall art that just has some educational posters. These are from my small shop, Minnie and Monty. I will leave the link down below for you guys. But we have shapes, the alphabet, the months of the year, days of the week, weather, and numbers we don't necessarily go through these right now it's more just wall art for him so the purpose for right now is decor the only one that we really go through are the shapes and the weather 
and then numbers we're really just focusing on one-to-one -one correspondence and for like the alphabet we are focusing on phonics and then panning down on the top of the shelf he loves magnets so this is a little magnetized board that i got from target i believe it's the chuckle and roar brand and it has a chalkboard on one side and it has a whiteboard on the other side and you can kind of stand it up like that and right now he just likes to play with the magnets but some days i'll ask him about the weather and um eventually we'll use it for like the days of the week and things like that but right now it's kind of just here for fun and this is our visual timer that we got from love every in his latest kit he loves to wind this up but we are just starting to learn the concept of passing time it is a very abstract concept for toddlers of his age but it helps a lot to be able to see what two minutes looks like going by what you know 20 minutes looks like going by and so we do use this a ton and it's been helping lately with transitions when we're finishing up playing in the playroom and it's like dinner time or bath time so i definitely recommend having a visual clock especially with a toddler around the age of two or three where time is still very abstract to them it really helps to make it more of a concrete idea for them in this corner over here i always keep his love every block set this gets a ton of use lately and he loves to use the little wagon feature so i always have that ready for him with the wheels on it but now to get into the actual shelf work every time we get a new love every play kit the toys end up on the shelf for a very long time because they do such a good job at piquing your child's interest and in knowing exactly where they are in their development. Luca just absolutely loves their toys, not to mention their phenomenal quality. So I enjoy having them on the shelf and seeing them here. So the first one that we have right here is a hammering board. This toy is very versatile. You can use this for a number of different skills, but Luca right now loves 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 matching in any way shape or form and he also is obsessed with tools so this is the perfect toy for him it comes with this little hammer or mallet whichever you want to call it and then all the pegs are inside so if you just wanted to have them practice hammering that would be a skill on its own or you can put on one of these little cards. There are multiple cards and they are double-sided just to have them practice color matching. Or if you wanted to make it even more challenging, you can mount it up here and then have them try to match it to the board. He hasn't made it here yet. I still like to leave it on here for him, but he has kind of like mastered the more simple patterns and now he's moving on to like the more sporadic patterns. The next cube has a matching game. Again, he's very much into matching. It's a memory game. So you just lay them all face down. It's the classic card matching game, but these have vehicles on them and he's super into vehicles. So he has been loving this lately. He did very well with these initially. I thought that it was gonna be more challenging for him, but he caught on to the concept of matching and the memory game very quickly and he has been loving it. The next cube just has some strips of paper with some toddler safe scissors. We are practicing cutting right now. Luca is left-handed so I feel like I'm having a little bit of a harder time teaching him how to really grasp things because I'm having to show him with my left hand which is not as natural for me because if I try and show him with my right then it gets confusing for him so we are working out the kinks in that if any of you mamas have tips for left-handed babies or left-handed toddlers and teaching them skills please leave them down below i need some help <laughs> and moving down here again he's very much into sorting and organizing and things like that so these are the like classic egg carton with the shapes this is how i display it to pique his interest if all of the eggs were just in here as is all he would care to do is rip them apart and not put them back together. So I leave them open and displayed like this and then it piques his interest because he sees, you know, he'll start to see the pairs and then he'll put them together. So that is how I display this activity. If you have this toy and your toddler just likes to rip them apart and does not care about putting them back together, try and display it like this. The next cube has his favorite activity on the shelf. This is a little chemist kit with a bunch of beakers and a funnel. I also include a microfiber cloth just so he can clean up his own spills. This is not included, but this came in his latest Love Every kit as well. 
he loves just pouring things he's really mastering pouring things from the spout and using two hands with this one he's mastered the funnel and right now i'm using this activity to teach him the fact that two colors can combine and make a secondary color so that is what we have been doing lately and he is so amazed by that so if you have this toy and you are looking for different ways to play with it try adding food coloring into the mix and it changes the game the last activity that we have on the shelf is this three ring stacker, but it's on a whole nother level. So we're currently working on just the squares. So these twist, some of them twist, some of them don't. And I put these off on the side just so that right now we're focusing on putting them on and not just taking them off. And he really has to work to bring it down and they're all different they all have different shapes or different functions like these twist off this is the only one that he has mastered so far and we've moved on to the square which is a bit more of a basic shape and then we will move on to this one but i really want him to master all of them before i remove it from his rotation now moving on from his rotation over to his little sitting and activity area this mat is from amazon it's a leather wipeable or it's vegan leather wipeable mat it's super easy to clean and it's actually extremely affordable compared to other ones so i will leave that link down below for you because it was the best price that i could find and then this table it is the everybody has it table from ikea um i believe it's about 30 dollars or less for the table and the chairs and luca has been using this since he was about one year old and it gets tons and tons of views. Moving up from there, this is one of the more new additions that I added. I got these frames from the Dollar Tree and then I just printed some natural artwork of things that he has been seeing around and that he's been interested in. So we are in the thick of spring. We have a lot of duck and geese around here. He is super into bugs right now. And now all of the greenery is coming back to life. So I do plan on switching out this artwork as frequently as I can, maybe um, like every other month or seasonally just to kind of like fit the nature that he is seeing in the world. This is one of our newest additions to the playroom and him and I both love just seeing it there. It's also eye level with him so it's at the perfect place for him. And then I have two hooks, one on either side of the table. This one just has a microfiber cloth to clean up any spills. We do a lot of water play down here on this mat. And then this is his little smock from Ikea. And I just leave that there if we're going to be doing any painting or anything. He already knows to grab that if we're doing something messy. And then above that we have a window. So I just have one of my favorite pieces of artwork that we've made together displayed on an easel. All of this stuff is from the Dollar Tree. Um, love every flower set, which I just, I'm using it as decor right now because it's from an old box. And he will ask to play with it sometimes, but he's already mastered this so much that we're just kind of using it for counting and just as decor and i made this little playroom artwork in our last condo with just sticker paper that i printed out on my printer and a broken wooden table from five below i just took the wood from it and like made it into a playroom sign and then i just put up one of the latest activities that we did from our kiwi co boxes up there just to display them um there's tissue paper that we put on there on the back side and so it lets out pretty light and it just looks cute there so i like to display some artwork where i can panning around this way this is where i keep all of the toys that are currently out of rotation as well as his homeschool stuff extra craft supplies and his craft cart um, this dresser right here was already in the basement and nothing in here belongs to me and the drawers are really hard to open so it kind of just works like a shelf honestly this bottom bin is filled with toys that luca has outgrown developmentally and they are being passed on to his little sister once she is old enough to play with them so that is in that bin this is all of his extra open-ended plays. I find that open-ended play takes up a lot more space than other toys, so we needed a big bin for that. This bin right here has all of his like math-related toys, and then this one has all of the language materials and puzzles. Up top, I just have his Love Every Sink drying. He got this in his second-to-last kit, and we still use it all the time. He loves water play. So I'll just kind of like leave it up out of reach for it to dry in between uses because I don't like to leave the water in there. It does get kind of yucky if you do. And then panning around, this is like my homeschool teacher mess that I'm still figuring out. These are all things that like I'll pull out on the fly 
and use with him if I'm trying to do something in particular with him. I have his little homeschool binder here that I created. Again, I'm going to say I use the term homeschool loosely right now at his age, but I do plan on homeschooling my children for as long as they want to be homeschooled. So I just, I do this more for me, honestly, than for him. Um, and obviously, like, I could do a way better job of organizing it, but because I don't dig into this hardcore right now, this is just kind of like my for funsies figuring it out bin. And then this is all of his extra craft and sensory supplies. So any extra paints, materials, Play-Dohs, kinetic sand, tools, like anything along the lines of that belong in this bin. And eventually, if you are interested in seeing what's in all of these other bins, let me know in the comments down below. Um, it would be way too much to fit into this video in particular. And I'm very much pregnant right now, so lifting all of these would be a big no-no. But um, in the future, if this is something that you would want to see, all the materials that we have for homeschooling and for play, let me know. I will definitely do that for you in the near future. Panning around once again, this is Luca's art cart. So on the top, we just have paints, crayons, markers, random wooden dowels, um, a random piece of a play carrot, stencils, glue, uh, paint brushes, things like that. On the second tier, we have tape, pipe cleaners, um, feathers, stickers, popsicle sticks, and um, some paint crayons. And on the bottom tier, we have canvases, wooden plaques, uh, foam paper, regular paper. I have one coloring book that was gifted to us. I try not to have too many coloring books, maybe just one at a time. He doesn't really understand the concept of coloring in lines, but I prefer blank paper that he can just create whatever he wants to create on. Then I have just like extra pipe cleaners and a, a roll of felt and things like that in there. Anything that I don't feel comfortable with him getting into yet, as I mentioned, he's two and a half. So I will keep it tucked away in there, but these are all the things that he has access to to grab whenever he wants. Panning around again, we have the couch. This is where Mama sits most of the time while he's playing. And then we have this floor mat. This was gifted to us and I used this with Luca when he was about like nine or ten months. But I just added this back in because I wanted to add more color. And now that the baby's going to be here, I just wanted to have like more of a padded surface for her. And then this is our pickler triangle that we got off of Etsy from a small business. There is a slide on one side and then a rock wall on the other side. And he still loves to use this. We got this right before his second birthday. A pickler triangle is a fantastic addition to any playroom, especially when you have a young toddler who is very much into their gross motor movement. I wish I had gotten one sooner. Um, Luca was very much into climbing things around one and a half and it ended up being furniture because we didn't have this yet. So if you see your young toddler starting to climb everything in the house, that is when you would invest in something like this. Panning around one last time, we are on the home stretch of this little playroom tour. This is our last little bit of open-ended play that we have. Ignore everything around it. Downstairs, the basement is also where we're keeping the baby stuff. It's also a basement and it's also storage and like a home gym. So we're gonna ignore all of that. This is his little pretend food play area. So I will set up like grocery shopping for him, put these around, he has his list, he'll fill his basket. And then in this cube, we have even more pretend play food and cooking utensils and things like that. So this is his little foodie area. And I do switch uh, this cube and like this area out with different pretend play or different open-ended play when I do his shelf rotation. On top of his bookshelf, I just have this counting abacus. It's really just decor right now. Um, he calls the red ones apples and he'll count up to like seven and then he'll lose interest. So it's literally just decor right now. And then this is where I keep mostly all of his books. He does have a bookshelf in his room that is front facing and the options are a lot more limited. So I'll, he'll pick out like a few of his favorites or I'll pick some out for him that kind of like go with the theme of whatever we're trying to learn at that time. And I will put them up in his room because we really don't do too much reading down here. This is more, this is almost like book storage. Every once in a while, I do find him sitting right in front of it and pulling things out and just kind of like reading through and enjoying photos. So I leave it out here for that purpose. I also don't have anywhere else to really put them. So this is our book storage. And then he has his bookshelf up in his room that has more purpose that we really use. I know that was a lot, but I wanted to be as in depth with everything that we have in all of our zones of play 
as possible to give you some inspiration and give you some ideas for your playroom. I have rearranged this place a bunch of times and this is what really seems to be working for us right now. We get a lot of use out of this room. This room gets a lot of love and I'm very happy with where we have it right now. That is it for our playroom slash homeschool room tour. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It helps this channel a lot. If you wanna see more Montessori content, motherhood related content, pregnancy and baby content, consider subscribing to this channel. I would love to have you here. Thank you once again for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below for me and make sure you check the description because I pack them with information for you guys. Thank you so much once again for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. But the truth is